Linden Lebayan. All right. Hi guys. Uh, thanks for returning to another one of my videos. Okay, for people who don't know me, my name is Linden. I'm a full-time software developer and a wannabe wedding filmmaker. So I love making videos, especially wedding videos for that matter. I'm not gonna pretend like I'm not born of that generation, that Peter McKinnon YouTube generation, uh, nor will I pretend like I'm not influenced by any of these big time uh, YouTubers that I love watching. That said, while I buy these products and like support these YouTubers I like, I'm hopefully buying products that I need, products that I'm not gonna just, you know, waste money on. So. Peter McKinnon obviously has come out with his like, you know, his filter pack, uh, these backpacks, uh, the line he has with Nomadic, um, but other YouTubers that I watch too obviously come out with their own merch and their own non-merch um, of things. Matty Hapoya is a great example. He came out with his NMO line uh, of clothing. I, I think it's just shirts, sweaters, hoodies. I might even have pants, I don't know. I ended up picking up uh, a couple of his hoodies and uh, one of his long sleeves. I happen to like them. Uh, they're technically not merch. He says they're not merch. This is this is the hoodie, uh, one of the hoodies anyway. You know, I needed new hoodies. I needed new shirts, so I figured it'd be nice to support um, one of these YouTubers that I, I really love love to watch. <clears throat> that said, I also watch Linus Tech Tips. You know, I'm a PC enthusiast, and if he puts something out that I deem is high quality enough and something I can use, like, for instance, a desk mat. I guess it's a desk mat. Uh, I ended up having to buy a second one because I changed desks and I changed layouts and now the first mouse pad I had doesn't fit so I had to buy a second one. But after all this, all these packages came in, uh, it kind of reminded me of an observation I made last year. Anyways, I'm going to start opening this stuff up. An observation I made last year with shooting weddings uh, was that the photographers I was shooting with, it didn't seem like they bought into any of the YouTube culture that I thought, me being super ignorant, that I thought everyone bought into. The whole debate between like full frame versus not full frame, you know, APS-C or, or Micro Four Thirds. I thought that was a typical point of contention for a lot of, uh, a lot of photographers or the idea where mirrorless versus, you know, standard DSLRs. I thought that was a, a point of contention too, where if you weren't on the newest stuff or somewhat newer, like, are you really are you really taking your craft seriously? Are you, are you really moving your your craft forward? Another topic that comes up in in uh, YouTube or in YouTube land is the idea that you got to smash your your gear. I'm exaggerating, but the idea that you got to smash your gear every shoot you do. Like if you're not out there smashing your gear and replacing your lenses and your bodies every 2 months, you know, full sending it so to speak, are you even are you even creating? You know, are you even really out there doing doing work and that's not what I noticed with a lot of these photographers. Okay, I'm gonna move this down here. Oh, what is this here? This is the sling, eight liter sling. Camera bodies alone, of the photographers that I shot with, I've only seen two X-T3s, separate occasions, and one ESRP in terms of mirrorless. Everything else was DSLRs, old lenses, DSLR bodies. Now I mentioned that because man, if you consume as much of this, you know, videography, photography videos on, on YouTube as much as I do, it almost seems like real professionals like or what what it seems like real professionals are or would look like are always shooting on the newest or somewhat newest somewhat latest uh, mirrorless bodies and that's not the case okay wow this is actually a lot chunkier than I thought it was gonna be oh it comes with dividers in here I thought I thought I'd have to share dividers between the backpack and this but oh and they revised this this used to be like a little nub on this side here I don't know. Maybe I'll do more in depth, like look into this stuff, but I figured I'd just unbox it while talking my head off here. How does this feel though? This is the quick latch. Okay. I guess I can make it longer. Okay. This might be a Winnipeg thing. I don't know. Context matters. I, I shoot out of Winnipeg, Manitoba. We're a pretty small town, all things considered. So among some of the bodies I can like name off the top of my head, a handful of Nikon D610s, way more D750s than I can remember, a couple 6D Mark IIs, I saw a bunch of 5D Mark IIIs and 5D Mark IVs. That's the bulk of the types of bodies that a lot of these wedding uh, shooters out of Winnipeg anyway 
are using. Some of the Nikon shooters will have a D610 and then two D750s hanging off of on the other side. Some of the Canon shooters will have 5D Mark IVs and a 6D Mark II on the other side. So it's obvious they've, they've bought into the ecosystem. Uh, I don't know what it's like building up uh, like a legit photography business and what investment looks like up front, whether they just bought like one camera and bought it to lenses or dropped, you know, let's say 10, $15,000 all at once. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know if that's what any of them did. Just something I noticed, man, like everyone's using older bodies, older lenses, you know, making 80 to $100,000 a year shooting these events. Oh, this is the large camera cube. So this will be for the backpack. When it comes to bags and what they're carrying, none of them are carrying any like Peter McKinnon, Nomadic, not even Peak Design stuff. Uh, a lot of them are using Think Tank. There's these like airport rollers uh, that they're using. I think they retail for about like six, 700 Canadian. More than often, if they're uh, they're on a wedding with me, they're, they're usually with a Think Tank bag of sorts. I just wanted options, so I ended up getting the smaller cubes plus the big cube because I'm treating this as an everyday bag and I wanna have all the options available to me. Now, obviously if I'm a videographer and I'm hired for a wedding, there's not gonna be a second videographer, uh, but no professional photographers in Winnipeg are shooting with Lumix bodies. Of course, YouTube would have me believe that there are a bunch out there in the States, other parts of the world shooting with Lumix. Oh shoot, actually now think about it. Zero of the photographers that I worked with shot Sony. I mean, obviously Sony only makes Mirrorless cameras at this point, but that's something pretty cool. And you would think with as much influence uh, that Sony has watching like YouTube videos, yeah, I would have seen at least one Sony shooter, but no, man, it was totally dominated by Canon and Nikon DSLR bodies. Now, I don't think I would have like really noticed or, or like made a, I'm not even making a big deal about it, but I, I, I probably wouldn't have made a deal about what these other photographers or what these photographers were shooting with had I not noticed during some speeches or during, you know, anytime when there's dialogue that I got to record, like letter reads or even first looks or stuff like that, DSLRs cannot shoot silently, at least not as far as I know. There's no silent mode. There's no electronic shutter mode on any of these uh, DSLR bodies. So I don't even have the option for a lot of them to be like, to like politely ask, hey, do you mind shooting in silent mode or electronic shutter mode? So. I don't hear a click, clack, click, 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 clack, 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 clack in any of the audio. You know, that would have been an option with one of the X-T3 shooters, but even then, the X, one of the X-T3 shooters that I did shoot with, the X-T3 was a secondary uh, camera. And she was using <clears throat> a 6D Mark II as her main camera and the X-T3 as a, a secondary. So I don't know if she would have liked shooting silent mode on the X-T3 for like a first look, uh, just to help me get cleaner audio. Something I haven't been able to try yet, but maybe for this year, if I'm able to f shoot with any photographers who are using mirrorless cameras, I might, I might make a, I might make a stinkin and, and try to politely ask if they'll happily shoot silent. Was I not supposed to get an extra pack of dividers? Oh, they're here. These are the extra pack of dividers. Okay. So I got these two cubes. I chose to go with the, the two small cubes and the big cube, because at any point I want to be able to, let's say, let's say I do the, I put all the, the tech and gear here. I should be able to push this down ugh, and have more room up top for clothes or non-camera tech related things. Call this the loft. Okay, yeah, so I'll be able to like dump stuff in there. Okay, well I can't wait to to put stuff in here and try to get this stuff organized. So okay, my, I didn't obviously didn't collect my thoughts uh, before shooting this video properly, but essentially what I'm just getting at is like, uh, yeah, I'm super ignorant. Like if you grew up, that's the wrong term. If you started your photo video career in YouTube land and if you don't live in a big enough city, like, I don't know, anywhere in the States, Tirana, even, Vancouver, you're pretty ignorant to what it's like out there. Winnipeg specifically, and I guess it's totally d dependent on your market, your region. Winnipeg specifically, not a lot of mirrorless shooters, a lot of professionals making great money, uh, a lot of business to go around. I don't know where I heard it before, but on YouTube, I heard, uh, they say like weddings and events, it's not a zero sum game. 
there is always gonna be ways to make money. There's always gonna be events, people trying to book you. I saw that firsthand last year and going to this year. I don't have enough time, mental fortitude, to be able to take on all these events. There are people out there who, who need video and photo done and people are willing to pay, you know, depending on the market, willing to pay a certain amount of money for it. Oh, it's the rain cover. Okay, that's cute. Just this week, the videographer I hired for my wedding, he referred, he has been referring me uh, work, which I, I appreciate, but he referred me to a uh, funeral home. They're live streaming a funeral service tomorrow. Oh wait, today, I explicitly don't like to live stream. I don't want to set up for it. I don't know. I get no pleasure from it. That's a weird way to say it. I don't get pleasure from streaming. You know, I do these wedding films because I love doing these wedding films. I love watching these wedding films. And I know at the end of the day, you, you're, you want to serve uh, your, your customer, your client, your couples. If I'm not passionate about it, if I don't feel like I can produce something that I'm going to be happy with, how can I expect these couples or clients to be happy with it too? So I don't offer streaming. Wedding specifically is what I try to focus on. And I have to tell this funeral chapel that, hey, I'm not, I'm not into streaming, but um, here are some other videographers who I know from Instagram that I uh, might want to reach out to. Oh, that's so much garbage. These are the extra dividers. Yeah, I don't know, this video's dumb. Man, these videos are dumb. But yeah, if I'm gonna end this video, I guess I, I just wanna say like, I've gotten a lot of uh, questions on Instagram and through my Twitter that I never even post on, but I'm grateful that you guys have tried to reach out and try to get my insight on stuff. Oh man, this is stupid, this video's everywhere. I can't even reshoot this because I, I already unpacked everything. Okay, well, whatever, tune in for my next video because I'm gonna have the I'm gonna have the final loadout ready, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, but thanks guys for watching. I'll uh, I'll see you in the next video. Oh, I gotta clean up.